one of the hottest new bikes for 2018. It's got to be the new BMC Time Machine Road, which has just been launched out in Switzerland. So I actually traveled Switzerland for the launch, and I'm going to tell you about the new bike in this video. It's currently about 30 degrees, and uh, we're just riding out of the center of Zurich into where our hotel is. Zurich is a really beautiful city. I've been here loads of times before, but I've only ever been to like the airport and then the train station. You know you're in Switzerland when? <laughs> Just been given the presentation on the new BMC Time Machine R01. Really exciting to ride this bike. It looks like a bike from the future. And um, got all the bikes out here, all the journalists here have been given a bike uh, to ride today. And so I've just been setting it up, putting my saddle height, how I want to get my pedals on it and stuff. And now we're gonna go for a ride for the first time on the new uh, Time Machine. So one of the first people in the world to ride it. As an aero bike aficionado, I just look well. I, yeah, this bike on paper so far is ticking all the boxes for me. I can't wait to ride it, so let's do it. stopping for a cheeky sandwich break. A bit of uh, refueling, Swiss style. It's like a giant jammy dodger with chocolate on the end. I mean, it's gotta be a winner. First things first, it replaces the original Time Machine Road, which came out in 2012, so kind of long overdue replacement. And the first thing to note is that the new bike is a disc brake only platform, whereas the previous bike was rim brakes, and that actually had rim brakes, um, a single mount on the front of the fork, and also a direct mount underneath the bottom bracket. That's gone, it's all disc brakes now. So visually, it's a radical design. And the, the first standout feature you see is the way that the bottles are uh, integrated into the frame. Now, this is what BMC are calling their aero module. And it's not just the bottles, there's also a storage box underneath the bottles, which you can fit in a small tool pouch as well, which is pretty cool. And overall, this creates this kind of sort of real, I don't know, stealth bomber, B2 bomber look to the bike. and. You know, you look at it and you think, that looks like a bike from the future. The reason why BMC's heavily integrated all this stuff into the frame is because they want to make the bike more aerodynamic and more functional. And in the past, the first sort of generation of aero bikes that were designed uh, would aerodynamically optimized in wind tunnels and such the like without a bottle fitted to the down tube. And when, as soon as you put a bottle on the down tube, it can actually adversely impact the aerodynamics. And this is something we've seen in our own testing as well. The down tube bottle cage also is a really neat solution for the junction box, which is located there as well. So it's out the wind, it's nice and neat and tidy, and much better than when we've seen them hanging underneath the stem. Really cool to see that. The next key feature of the bike has got to be the ICS aero cockpit, which they've put on at the front. So this is a newer version of the ICS, which stands for Integrated Cockpit System, that we first saw on the BMC road machine and then on the team machine. And what BMC have done is actually changed the shape of this to make it more aero. They've made the stem sort of flatter and wider which not only makes it more aerodynamic, but it also makes it a bit more vertically compliant when you've got your hands on the bars. So that's good as well for improving comfort. And it comes uh, with this bar that's the new aero bar, um, which has a round clamping area and the stem goes onto that. And then you've got this really neat section with just no cables visible at all. BMC has also been really keen to make this bike practical. 
Now, in the past, this has been the Achilles heel of many of these super fast integrated aero bikes like the Trek Madone and the Venge Vias Disc. Things like BMC that. has addressed this in a couple of ways. So the first thing is that there's actually a, a recess in the top tube for additional hosing and additional cable so that when you adjust the length of your stem or the a length of your um, stack or the width of your bars, you don't need to re cut cables to the correct length. There's slack that can be taken up or the slack that can be already built into there so that you can make it longer and things like that. So not having to adjust the length of your cables and completely take them out and change the cables is a massive, massive plus. It also means that if you take the bars off to put it in a bike box, that's easier as well. You can sort of take the bars off and twist them around because you've got plenty of cable in there to allow you to do that. It's really good. And also the spacers, if you look below the stem, are split spacers, they come apart. And this is good because it means that you can take spacers out or put spacers in without having to undo the hydraulic lines, which if any of you have done that, you'll know is a massive, massive faff. But what is the new time machine like to ride? Well, attending the launch, I was actually able to take the new bike out for a spin on a couple of rides. And without a question, the first time I got on the bike, it, it, you could feel it was a really quick bike. I mean, I've ridden a lot of quick bikes, this one, it feels quick, it feels tangibly fast. And there were a few instances where we were able to go really fast on the test rides and there was a camera bike and I ended up motor pacing behind it a little bit. And at sort of 50 kilometers an hour, the bike just held its speed beautifully and also felt very aerodynamically stable. There was no sort of twitchiness at the front end, which is really good. With regards to handling, I'd say the steering response was predictable and fairly neutral and the handling felt pretty assured. I was comfortable riding on it, even though I'd only been on it a couple of times. And it was nice carving through some nice corners on these beautiful Swiss roads. Also, I feel that it's quite good that you've got the bottles and then the tool station located low in the frame on the bike, because this helps kind of lower the center of gravity as well, rather than having a big heavy saddle pack just underneath your saddle. BMC have made a load of claims about the comfort of this bike. Now, comfort has often been the undoing of many aero bikes. And they're claiming that it's sort of pretty compliant, very similar to the, the uh, team machine. It's, it's very hard to judge though, because on the two rides we had on it, we were riding on beautiful Swiss perfect tarmac. Um, and it'll be, you know, at this stage, it's hard for me to judge based on that. But as soon as we get it over to the UK and ride it on the incredible pseudo pave laid out very kindly by Highways England, it'll be, much more interesting to see how it performs. When climbing, the new time machine felt very capable as well. It's slightly heavier than the team machine, as you'd expect, but it's not noticeably so. I struggled to really notice the difference and didn't feel that I was being held back by being on a slightly heavier bike. And there was also no wheel rub at all, and the bike's just incredibly stiff. So, you know, it makes for a very good platform once you start getting out of the saddle and gassing it. Now, overall, I've been really impressed with the new bike. I think that the looks are gonna divide the judges in any beauty contest. It's very radical looking with that integration of the bottles, but I think this is a sign of the future. I think that we're gonna start to see more of this because if this is what's gonna make bikes faster, then more bike designers will, will, will adopt this kind of approach. Now, BMC are gonna offer three versions of the bike. Pricing and availability are yet to sort of be finalized and. Uh, announced in the UK, but I think by the end of the summer it should be available. And there's going to be three different options, a SRAM Red, an Ultegra Di2, and a Jura Ace Di2. And there's also going to be a frame set uh, only option as well, if you want to build the bike up to your own specification. Now, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, why not subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel and stay tuned for more videos on some of the new bikes that are starting to emerge. So we're definitely in launch season right now. But until then, I'll see you later.